All right, I've been waiting all year to show this fly, and now is finally the time. Uh, what I'm about to tie for you is a fly called a Lucky Bee. And this is a pattern I've been working on for, for honestly, about 30 years. Um, and it comes from back in the days when I was guiding up in Cheeseman Canyon. And every day that I guided, I'd pump one fish's stomach to kind of just see uh, what was changing or what was different from the day before. Um, and during the summer months, it seemed that uh, uh, very often... Um, each fish that I pumped, um, you know, just a random selection, um, you know, being the, the fish that we caught, um, each one of those fish seemed to have a yellow jacket in its stomach. And uh, um, ever since then, over the years, I've been trying to come up with a yellow jacket pattern that, uh, um, you know, I could kind of throw during the midsummer days and, and uh, have an extra terrestrial pattern to throw besides a, a beetle or an ant or a hopper. Um, and finally, um, I came up with, with what I think is a really good imitation, and the fish seem to agree. Um, and it's got kind of a, a few cool little techniques that we're going to use uh, to build this fly. So um, to get started, I've got just a regular sewing needle here, and I've got that pinched in my vise uh, with the pointy end out here. And I'm going to take some, some dot unit thread in yellow, and I'm going to start this thread with a short little jam knot, but I'm going to leave a long tag end and I'll drape that back over the vise into my material spring. Um, now what I'll do from here is I'm going to take a section of McFly lawn, um, and this is yellow just because it matches the fly, but it doesn't have to be yellow. It's not really going to show. Um, but I'm going to take just a few strands of this, just part of a strand, and I'm going to tie this down on top of that jam knot, and then with my tag end wrapped up with it, I'm going to come back about eight or nine millimeters back to the end there, and then I'll trim that front end off. And I usually leave the yarn hanging out the back end there. Um, now, to build the body, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of three millimeter foam that's cut about one millimeter wide. You can see that one's not exactly square, but it's not really going to make a big difference. I've cut that with a razor blade, um, just a straight edge and a razor blade. And what I'll do is I'm going to come back to the front here and I'm going to tie this piece of foam down right at the end of the body, or right at the end of that, that thread start, I should say. And I'm going to wrap back over it all the way to the other end. And you can see I just sort of did open wraps there. Um, and I'm wrapping sort of regular tightness here. I'm not, not accommodating for the, uh, um, for the needle. Um, now I'm going to take a couple inches of 0x tippet material. And this is just regular nylon. You can use fluoro if you want. And I'm going to tie this in right at the front edge of the body and wrap back over it oh, maybe just a little more than halfway. And then I'll bump my thread forward again and loop it around and catch it one more time. And then I'll wrap forward over both of those strands right up to the end of the body. So we've got two strands of mono sticking out the, the front edge here. Now I'm going to come in with a little bit of super glue. And what I want to do here is put a light coat all the way around. And I want to make sure I get all the way end to end and again all the way around the, the needle body here. And typically I'll use a, a scrap of foam to sort of smear that around a bit, um, which is a handy thing to have on your desk when you're working with uh, super glue on a fly, is that little scrap. So now here, before that glue dries, I'm going to start to wrap my foam. So I'm going to start back here at the back and I'm going to wrap fairly tightly, compressing the foam as I go over that glue and overlapping the turns. To just short of where I started the thread. And you can see we've got a little gob of glue sticking out there. I'm going to pick up that scrap of foam and just wipe that extra glue out. And then I'll tie off the foam right up on top of where I started it with three or four turns of thread. And then I can reach in and trim that out. Um, so you see what we've got here is a little bit of a, let's take our contrast down just a bit, there we go, um, sort of a blocky front shoulder on that body. 
Now I'm going to come in and whip finish, and you can either use your big whip finisher or uh, or your fingers here because you want to whip finish up on top of the body and pull that down and then trim that thread out. Now without delaying what I want to do is grab this body and give it a little twist and pull it off of the off of the needle. Okay so now what I've got back in here let me, let me get them separated is that tag into the thread and what I'll do with it so I'm going to pull on that, and that'll pull the slack out of that jam knot and tighten that all from the inside out. And I'll trim that tag off, and then I'll trim that yarn off as well. What the yarn is put on there for is to make it easier to get the body off of the needle. So we've got this nicely tapered, segmented yellow jacket abdomen now, and I'll usually take it while that glue's still wet and just give it a bit of a bend between my fingertips to arch it up a little like so. So that's how I make the abdomen. Okay. Um, now we're going to come in and we'll make the thorax, but I'm going to need to reposition the camera a bit. So I'll be right back. All right. Now what I've got in my vise is a 2487 Tiemco um, in a size 16. And I'm going to start with that same yellow dot thread. And I'll start this just behind the, the hook eye. I want to wrap back to just about even with the barb, maybe just right in front of the barb there, right where the barb lifts up. And I'll pick up my extended body that we made earlier, and we've got two pieces of mono coming out of the front. Um, generally, one of those will be straighter than the other, so I'm going to cut off the one that is not as straight and nick it out of there. So I've got just the, the single one coming out. And I'm going to catch that mono on top of the hook and wrap forward over it. Now what I want to make sure that I do is leave a little space here between the abdomen and the hook. Um, and I'll even kink that forward a little bit to elevate that just slightly. I can get that nub cut a little shorter. There we go. Like so. Um, and that's going to create the waist that we have between the, the abdomen and the thorax on this fly. So I'm going to come forward over that mono and then I'll back up again and fold it back and catch it again. And the reason I fold that mono in is I found when you're fishing this fly, if you uh, are not careful and don't do that step, uh, when you go to pull the fly out of the fish's mouth, you can very often uh, slide the extended body right out from underneath everything. So I want to loop that mono in just to anchor everything in place. So now I'll come back here to the bend or just in front of the, the, the base of the, the abdomen. And I'm going to tie in a piece of small amber sexy floss um, and I want to get a fairly straight piece of this. Um, and this is barred sexy floss. So it's got some, some bar marks on it. And I'm going to tie this in at the center of its length. And I'll pull one half back to the far side and wrap right up to the base of that mono. And then I'll pull the near side back and catch it in place. And you can sort of tweak those into position like so. So those are our back legs. Then I'll take another piece of foam that is cut about two by three millimeters, so it's about two millimeters thick here. And I'm going to bring my thread to just behind the hook eye here. And I'll tie this in. But first, I'm going to put just a little shot of super glue down. Um, and again, this is just going to help to anchor that foam in place so things don't slide around later. Now I'll tie this foam in. I want to catch it just at the end. And I'll wrap over it right up to the base of those legs. And just anchor it tightly in place, like so. All right, now I'll take a little black super fine dubbing. And I'm going to build a ball here. And this is really just going to be to sort of help separate the pieces that we're going to tie in to form the thorax. So I've got a tight, thin strand of black superfine dubbing here. And I'll just build a ball. You can see I'm just letting that pile up. And when I run out of dubbing, I should be on bare thread just in front there. So just a little ball of dubbing. 
Now at this point, I'm gonna tie my wings in. And what I've been using for the wings um, is a material you'll be familiar, familiar with by now. Um, and this is polypropylene macrame yarn. Um, and I've brushed out and mixed several colors here to create this wing color, um, which is sort of a you know overall rusty, uh, rusty orangish color, which is the color these yellow jackets uh, wings are. Um, and I've got rust, gray, black, yellow, and tan, I think, in this bundle. Um, you can see it's uh, you know fairly nicely modeled. But what I want to do here is I want to grab a fairly small clump of this out of my bundle, like so. And what I'll do is I usually cut the ends so that they're square, just so I'm not fighting with loose ends. And I'm going to take this piece of yarn and I'm going to furl the ends, which means I'm going to twist them in opposite directions until they double up, like so. So I've made this little loop. And then I'll take that loop and I'll roll it and pinch it very tightly in my fingertips. And what I'm trying to do is crease the end of that loop into a tight little V, like so. And I'll use this to make my first wing. So I'm going to lay this wing about to the middle of the abdomen along the far side of the hook, and it's sort of angled across the top. I'm going to get a few turns on it, and I'll turn him so you can see him, like so. You can see that's sort of angled from, from near to far. And then I'll take that same clump of yarn so that I have the same size wing, and I'll do it again to form the second wing, like so. And I'll lay this one in at the opposite angle and catch it with a few turns. Like so. Now I'll come in and trim these butt ends out. And I want to make sure those wigs are right up to the front edge of that dubbing ball. Now I'm going to put the legs in on either side. So I'll take two more strands of the sexy floss and I'll put the near side on first and this is mounted just underneath the wing. And I'll catch it with a couple turns. Then I'll come in and catch the far side in the same way, just a couple turns. And I can sort of position those to be just under where the wings sit. So we've just got X's there, nothing fancy. Another little pinch of super fine dubbing. And I do find you really want to put this dubbing on as tightly as you can get it. Uh, we've got a fair amount of thread work we're going to do right here, so we want to keep this very thin. And before I start to wrap that dubbing, I'll put just a little shot of super glue right at the base of the wing, and that'll just anchor that tie down. And I'll wrap the dubbing right over that wet glue in the space between the legs. And then I'll use the dubbing to X between the legs. And I might need to go a couple of times to keep them separated. Looks like I'm gonna have I thought I had exactly the right amount of dubbing. I'll show you what I've got left. I need just a tiny bit more. So we'll add just a little bit here. To X between these legs. And then finish off just up here behind the hook eye. So now I'm going to take my piece of foam up between the two wings Kind of divide these legs back so I don't catch them. And I'm not really stretching this foam here, but I'm going to tie it down just behind the eye. And get a couple nice turns right in place, one on top of the other, right there behind the hook eye. Now to form the head, I'm going to take this remaining piece of foam and I'm going to fold it back and make a little nub here. And again, just sweep those legs back so they're out of your way and catch that one more time. like so. So now I'll feed out a bit of thread. And I'll set up my whip finisher. 
And again, I'll just sweep those legs back and I'm going to whip finish right through that band and pull that thread down tight. Come in and trim my thread out. And then I'll lift this piece of foam that we've got sticking up and I'm going to pull it fairly tightly and trim it close. Um, it'll almost meld right down into the top of the fly there. So now I can come in and trim the legs. So these back legs I want longer than the abdomen. The back legs on a yellow jacket are pretty long and creepy. So I'm going to leave those fairly long. And these front legs I'm going to trim just slightly shorter. About like so. So we've got our creepy yellow jacket legs. Those just look right at home on this fly. And then because our glue is still wet there, I'm going to take these two wings and sort of pull them forward and up. And even pinch the sides of the thorax so that we've got those wings elevated. It just makes the fly a lot easier to see on the water if those wings are slightly elevated like so. And then the last little bit, the fun part, comes. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use a black Copic marker and we're going to draw this up like a, like a yellow jacket. Um, so what I'll start by doing is just drawing little triangles down the back of the bug. And this is based on research in that I went out on my deck and killed a couple of these little suckers when I was coming up with this fly and uh, used them as a template for the pattern that I needed. And from the point on each of those triangles, I'll draw a little line down each side. And I like this Copic marker because it's got a very fine tip. Like so. Now one thing that is very distinct marking on yellow jackets is they've got little dots down the sides of their abdomen. So I'll color those in with the marker as well. And someone in the comments is going to say something about, you know, do you think those, those dots are for you or for the fish? They're for me, man. I like them. Um, they make this fly look like a yellow jacket. So, yes, I'm going to be as accurate as I can get because I can. Um, so now I'm going to take my marker and I'm just going to kind of draw wide chevrons on the, the thorax and up each side of the head with a line down the center. Like so, you can see you're just modeling that, you know, pretty basic there. And then as the final go around, I'm going to dot the eye on either side of that head segment. And I draw a little chevron on the face of the bug to make him look angry and mean because nobody likes yellow jackets. And then we are finally done uh, with the coolest fly I've come up with in a long time. Um, I'm really excited about this one. I fished it a fair bit um, before I showed it to anybody. And uh, um, I was honestly blown away by, by how effective the fly was. Um, fish do recognize what a yellow jacket is. They do eat them. And at this point anyway, because this is a new fly, um, they, uh, they don't seem to be pretty, or, you know, afraid of it at all as far as a, an artificial. Um, they eat it with 100% confidence. I had fish pull up out of six feet of water to eat this thing. Um, and it really just blew us away. Um, the first time I fished this was with my friend Danny Lane in Idaho. Um, and man, it, it cleaned house. Um, we, we were amazed that the yellow jacket and, uh, um, the black version of this fly, which there's another video of called the Jeffrey Dauber, uh, that imitates a mud dauber. Both of those flies, um, just pulled fish up during the heat of summer in the middle of the day, bright, bright, sunny day. Um, and fish know what it is and, and they, they like to eat them. Um, so this one's a win-win for me. Um, you know, cool fly, fun to tie. Um, and, and man, they eat it. Um, I fished it on some pressured waters around here at home in Colorado and, uh, you know, even places like Deckers, uh, my son and I fished there last fall and I just threw this kind of everywhere. It, it, I felt like there might be a fish, you know, along the edges, fish it like I would a beetle or an ant. Um, and was, was honestly surprised how many fish came up and, and hammered this thing. So, um, that's my lucky bee pattern. And, uh, 
I'm excited. I like it. I hope you guys like it. Uh, if you have any questions, you know where to get me. And uh, that's him. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven.